This is the Rookie Big Board. I'm your host, Matt Hicks, the FF Educator, here to talk 2023 wide receiver prospects part two. We're going to be digging into another 12 wide receiver prospects, and then I have another 10 bonus guys that I'm going to quickly touch on as guys to watch at the end here. So in total, we'll be discussing 22 players here over the next 25 or so minutes. Folks, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed. We're pushing 3,000 subs on YouTube. Would love to hit that by Senior Bowl because I will be doing Senior Bowl prospect uh, previews with John Lobb. And then we get into rookie profiles and then is the meat and potatoes of the rookie season. You're going to want to make sure you get the notif notifications. As we dig into these prospects here, let me know what you think. Comment on the video. Give it a like. And if you are not already... This is the time, folks. This is the time to head on over to patreon.com slash rookie big board and you get access to the rookie big board rankings, to the Debbie rankings, dynasty rankings. And by the way, all of my rankings are seamless across. So you can compare a freshman in college's value to a 10 year NFL pro. As we go through here, I'm just going to be jumping into the rookie big board and I'm actually going to be reading off of wide receiver notes here. So without any further ado, let's get into the second half of this wide receiver class. And there's going to be a few themes, folks, as we jump into Zay Flowers, a few themes here. It's depth. There's depth, there's talent, and there's going to be risers that I'm going to be talking about because there's always risers as we go through the depth of a class. And the wide receiver depth here is really solid. So I'm going to be identifying some guys that might be ranked a little bit lower that I do expect to potentially rise over the next couple months. And also we're going to be talking about some big guys here. Not to start, we're going to start with Zay Flowers, but you're going to notice a lot of size as we get into the back half of this class. And those bigger wide receivers that go later in the draft do have the potential to hit pretty nicely for your fantasy football team. But first, let's get into Zay Flowers. It hurt, folks. It hurt for me to leave Zay Flowers off of the first episode because I'm high on Zay. And I'm actually really high on the first three guys in particular in this episode. They were all guys that going into the season I thought were potential day two guys. But for various reasons, I'm projecting now as early day three players. And that starts here with Zay. I have a project as an early day three simply because he got that senior bowl snub. He's a little undersized at 5'10", 177, but he is a tremendously fun prospect to watch. He is a weapon before the catch. He is a weapon, folks, after the catch. He displays quickness, twitchy athleticism throughout his tape. He bursts off the line of scrimmage. He displays the ability to win all three levels of the field. That is high praise for me. Winning at all three levels of the field as a wide receiver makes you more attractive to more NFL offenses. Boston College gave him manufactured targets at the line of scrimmage. He won deep with the vertical game. For fantasy football purposes, we're going to hope that he consistently wins deep in the vertical game. Maybe Maybe he gets into a high octane offense that puts him uh, on the seam, lets him run deep, and he ends up being a guy that gets eight, nine touchdowns a season. That is the dream, and I do think it is a possibility for Zay Flowers. But a watered down Rondale Moore is also an option for Zay Flowers. I think he's better than that, but I'm just trying to give you a range of what I see for him. He has really sticky hands, he has good ball tracking. Folks, at 5'10", 177, he plays a lot bigger. All right, he extends well, he's got good athleticism, good vertical ability. So his frame at times could look like he's closer to six foot than he is 5'10". And he's elusive after the catch. He's going to make guys miss. He's going to gain extra yards after the catch. So there is a lot of upside in Zay Flowers' game. And he's been very productive for Boston College. And let's be honest here, Boston College isn't exactly a dynamic offense. Uh, so Zay Flowers has been the offense here. 200 receptions. 3,056 receiving yards, 29 touchdowns, and averaging 15.3 yards per reception. I love that number. I just mentioned, they legitimately gave him a lot of targets near the line of scrimmage, and he still has 15.3 yards per reception because when he's not getting it at the line of scrimmage, he's getting it 30 yards downfield. So he's a really dynamic, fun player. Jumping in here is Jaden Hazelwood. Jaden Hazelwood is the classic example of somebody who I believe is going to be a better NFL pro than necessarily he was a college player. Jason, Jaden Hazelwood, folks, we have to go back to the 2019 recruiting class because Hazelwood was the fourth best player in the 2019 recruiting class. Okay, he was a five-star, the first wide receiver uh, in the country, so the highest-ranked wide receiver in the country. He is the 133rd best wide receiver all time in 247 sports recruiting rankings, Okay. So high school, verified 4-5-7, verified 34-8, uh, 
All right. He is a verified 6.25. That was in high school. He's currently listed at 63202. So he's got good size to him. He moves well for his size. He's a fluid wideout for his size, a reliable target underneath and downfield. He displays the ability to put his body in a position to win and gets contested catch situations. Uh, he wins in those contested catch situations consistently. He moves with nice footwork. He's comfortable running with the ball in his hands after the catch. He gets going quick. And he closes space quickly. He's a willing blocker. All right, he's physical. I think an NFL team will like his ability to compete physically at the next level. In terms of production, he had that 2022 torn ACL. And I don't know if that's playing into his projected draft capital, or I should say Senior Bowl snub. He also got snubbed from the Senior Bowl. He will be at the Shrine Bowl. So I don't know if that injury is playing a part in things here. But I do think it played a part in his... Uh, his, his inability ultimately to contribute at a high level at Oklahoma, which is where he started his career. Then he transferred to Arkansas and he kind of found himself in a weird Arkansas offense this year, but 121 receptions, 1400 receiving yards, 10 receiving touchdowns and 11.9 yards per reception in 37 games. I think that production is hurting him, but like I said, there's plenty of examples that we find where guys are more productive at the NFL level than at the college level. And I think Jaden Hazelwood could be one of those guys. Dante Demas is the third guy here in that mini tier I mentioned off the top. Guys who I thought would be day two heading into this season, but have dropped a little bit and just a little bit because I still like Dante Demas. 6'4, 215, a former uh, three star recruit uh, in his own right here, 17th wide receiver in my rankings. And folks, remember if you're wondering why I'm starting at 15 in my wide receiver rankings, this is part two. So whether you're listening on the podcast or watching on YouTube, go back an episode here. I'll mark it for you. Go back and watch that episode, definitely. Okay, Uh, Dante Demas here. I also have him projected to be an early third-round fantasy football selection, day three uh, NFL draft selection here. Large catch radius, all right? A nice combination of size and speed, large frame, a really good wingspan, consistent catch here. Uh, He effortlessly goes up and snags balls out of midair. He's not afraid to be physical in traffic. He's bendier, quite frankly, than a wide receiver should be at his size, and he displays really good contact balance and elusiveness while working after the catch. Accelerates really well running downfield, shows the ability to outstride defensive backs here, and he refuses to give up on plays. After the catch, he's tenacious. He's going to go. He's going to scrap out a couple extra yards. Do have him projected in that wide receiver 36 to 48 range. So expecting him to be a back end wide receiver three, wide receiver four here over the start of his NFL career. Now, I think that production is simply limited playing in the Maryland offense, not the most high octane passing attack, but 128 receptions just north of 2,000 receiving yards, 14 receiving touchdowns, 15.7 yards per reception in 41 games. On to Jaden Reed here, 601 85 three-star prospect, originally from Western Michigan, had an explosive freshman season, transferred to Michigan State, have him as a mid Third round rookie pick here, which is a little bit lower. I don't think he has as much name brand here, but he could be a really effective player depending on the school that he lands with. Electric, twitchy athlete here. He wins all around the field. He gets off the line of scrimmage quickly. He moves quick horizontally. He moves fast vertically. That 6-0 height compared or combined, I should say, uh, with that speed is a really nice sweet spot here for NFL production. He pairs that athleticism with good body control, consistent hands. He pulls in off-target passes, makes them look easy. He's the type of player here that you just want to make sure he touches the ball. And Michigan State made sure that he was a featured part of that offense. 203 receptions, 2,866 receiving yards, 26 receiving touchdowns, 14.1 yards per reception in 43 games for uh, both the Spartans and the Broncos of Western Michigan. So a lot to like about Jaden. To another fast wide receiver here, it's Darius Davis out of TCU. 5'10", 175, three-star prospect. Currently wide receiver 19 for me in that same 305 to 308 range as Jaden Reed. Early day three NFL draft projection. We're talking about a speedy wideout. His speed simply jumps off the tape here. And whenever you're talking about speed, you're talking about a potential NFL draft riser, right? He gets off the line of scrimmage quickly, accelerates really well in a straight line. He moves well laterally as well, closes space quickly at all three levels of the field. Consistent hands, holds on well through contact. Uh, which means he can play over the middle. He can play in traffic. 
which is really good for somebody who's 5'10", 175. So he's not going to be limited to just sitting along the boundary, which is really important in the NFL for somebody with that type of speed if you want to project him into uh, significant production here. 105 receptions, 1,400 receiving yards, 9 receptions, and just 13.3 yards per reception in 40 games for the Horned Frogs. So an NFL team certainly is not going to draft him for production, but we know the NFL loves to draft guys for speed. Elijah Higgins here. Elijah Higgins is going to be highlighted as one of the top risers for me out of this class. So right now, I have him ranked as wide receiver 20. I have him ranked in that 305 to 308 range uh, for rookie draft, super flex, and early day three for the NFL draft. I have him projected as a wide receiver 3-4, so that borderline, you know, 36 to 48 overall. Now, I think he could be even better than that. So 6'3", 234. Elijah Higgins, former four-star recruit here, uh, playing at Stanford. 85th nationally in his class, 14th wide receiver. So a high four-star recruit. He is an athletic big man, okay? He creates space consistently, which creates separation consistently, which I really appreciate. I love his fluidity for his size. If you're watching him on tape, you have to double check to make sure you have that height weight listed correctly. 6'3", 234, and he plays fluid. He works his way into space. Like I mentioned, he has consistent hands, displays the ability to shake defenders after the catch and gain extra yards. All right, love that, again, for the size. Stanford used him creatively. They gave handoffs to Elijah Higgins. They worked him around the field. All right, so he has to develop as a route runner. He has to develop a little bit more here in terms of versatility, but I honestly think it might just be the way Stanford used him because Stanford underused uh, Higgins. They underused Michael Wilson, who we'll talk about a little bit later, and it may have just been the quarterback play that he had to battle through, but he has good hands, he has yak upside, and he has sots. Folks, that checks a ton of boxes, and so definitely somebody who I think could end up being a day two guy. 119 receptions, 1,380 receiving yards, six receiving touchdowns, 11.6 yards per reception, and 27 games for the Cardinal. So like I said, the production isn't there. The chatter isn't quite there yet, but I definitely think his profile fits somebody who could be a riser through the draft process. Dontavian Wicks here. Wicks is somebody who's getting a little bit more buzz, but maybe still not enough. Coming out of Virginia, 6'1", 200. My wide receiver, 21. Back end of day three. Um, sorry, early day three NFL draft projection. Back end of the third round of rookie drafts. 309 to 312 is my projection for him. You look at Wicks, you're going to see another big man here in a different way. He has highlight real catches. Uses his frame very well. He shows the ability to stretch out to haul in balls throw, thrown over his head or that lead him too far downfield. He shows the ability to create separation downfield with speed at or near the catch point, and he combines his physical handwork in there. Now, he's not the most elusive guy after the catch, but he does have good field vision, and he does scrap out extra yards after the catch. So pretty dynamic guy over, overall, and you have to love a wide receiver where you have that mentality of, if I just put it in his vicinity, he's going to go up and make a play. 90 receptions. Uh, for the Cavaliers, 1,694 receiving yards, 12 touchdowns, 18.8 yards per reception. I know yards per reception is a number a lot of folks like to key in on. And in just 23 games, so not the biggest numbers, but for just playing in 23 games, that's pretty good. A uh, lot to be excited about with Dontavian Wicks. All right, Trey Palmer. All right, Trey Palmer out of Nebraska started his career uh, for LSU now, I like Trey Palmer a lot. I'm not sure that he is going to translate directly for fantasy football production, but I think he's going to be a good NFL wide receiver, all right? And I think he's going to be somebody who can just tear it up underneath. He's a shorthanded wide out. He's going to get he's going to catch a ball. If it's thrown on target, he's catching the ball. He's a quick athlete and he navigates the lower third of the field really well, right? So when I say the lower third of the field, I'm talking uh, 5, 10, 12 yards off the line of scrimmage, all right? So he's working his out route very well. A nice out route for Trey Palmer. A good drag route, all right? He has convincing footwork, which allows him to create separation right off the line of scrimmage, and he does not allow DBs to jump his route. So he uses his 6-0-180 frame well. He positions guys. He's aggressive going after the ball. He's a smart wide receiver. After the catch, he's going to scrap out extra yards. Now, I think an NFL offense, an NFL team is going to see Trey Palmer and want to put him in their offense in a slot role 
in, in a traditional slot role, which may limit his fantasy football production. All right. So in, in a, in a recency comparison here, think of the way that we felt about Kyle Phillips at the beginning of the season. That's the way we could be feeling about Trey Palmer, right? Somebody that's exciting, has good footwork, really nice route running ability in the routes that he's going to be asked to run. But I don't think he's going to end up being a guy that's going to get six, seven, eight touchdowns a season or a guy who's necessarily going to see 100 plus targets a season. So it's a little bit limited. But for folks who play in, you know, our deeper dynasty leagues here, we need the Trey Palmers. And even if you don't play in a super deep league, how do you feel about your roster this time of season? Right. How would you feel about having a, a guy that could consistently get you five catches and 50 yards a game to slot in? Most folks would probably take that in the end of a fantasy football season. So Trey Palmer is definitely somebody who could have fantasy football relevancy, even if he is mostly living in the slot at the next level. 111 receptions, 14, 26 receiving yards, eight receiving touchdowns, 12.8 yards per reception in 40 games. Again, that's with LSU and with Nebraska. A future wide receiver, four, five. So we're dropping a little bit, like I mentioned, but for good reason here. Moving on to Jonathan Mingo. Mingo is a guy who I feel like I should have higher, but I just, you know, there, there's other guys that I have above him. So He's a former four-star prospect here, 215th national. He was the 32nd wide receiver in his class. Uh, ADP projection here, early fourth round. So we've moved into the fourth round. And by the way, even though we've moved into the fourth round, I hope you don't feel like these guys uh, are being slanted. Or, or I'm not excited about them. That's the whole point of the rookie big board is that we, you know, I go through, I put in 75 uh, current evaluations. We'll end up over a hundred because you need to find these guys in rounds four five and six that are going to contribute to your fantasy football rosters. It's not all about, you know, picks 101 through 103 here. It's not even just about the second round picks, which are my favorite picks. It's about rounds three, four, five. We dig deep and we find these prospects. You're never going to find better value here. And Mingo could end up being one of those guys that has really good value. He's 6'2", 215, displays uh, really short hands. He hauls in on-target balls and he hauls in off-target balls. All right, He extends his large frame well. He'll lay out for balls with impressive consistency. Okay, He can move east and west. He can accelerate very well moving downfield. He tracks the ball. And he's another one of these guys that every ball just seems catchable when you're throwing it to Jonathan Mingo. He's not afraid to work through traffic. He holds on to the ball well while taking contact. And he does display some elusiveness and ability to scrap after the catch here, especially for a guy, again, who's coming in at 6'2", 215. So we have size, we have athleticism, we have really nice hands. Somebody who, if we put all these pieces together here, and he did get a senior bowl invite, so he'll have the opportunity to show off in a big way. A lot to like about Jonathan Mingo out of Ole Miss. Tank Dell. I know there's a lot of folks who are going to be really high here on Tank Dell. Nathaniel Dell, Tank Dell coming in at 5'10", 165 here. So definitely a smaller wide receiver playing out of Houston. So fun. For folks who are playing college fantasy football, so productive, right? So fun. Such an amazing player to watch. Just absolutely work around the field. But we have to be realistic in the way he'll translate for fantasy football purposes. So let's break down a little bit here. Speedy runner. All right. He's somebody who's going to go to the 40 and he is going to fly and he's going to get a lot of people excited. And I currently have his uh, draft projection here as day three early. We have seen it, all right, Calvin Austin. We've seen it, um, Tutu Atwell. Some of these smaller profile guys, they go to the combine and they just fly and their NFL draft stock jumps up. So maybe that happens with Tank. Maybe it doesn't, but he is a speedy runner. He gets right off the line of scrimmage. He consistently separates downfield with speed and footwork. It's not just speed. He's got good footwork. He's a twitchy athlete. He breaks defensive backs in space, and I mean breaks defensive backs in space. Good lateral movement, covers a lot of space quickly while working around the field, has consistent hands. In 2022, he returned punts for the Cougars. In 2021, he returned kickoffs. You'd have to think that an NFL team is going to be interested in him for special team success, which I know doesn't sound exciting. We don't get fantasy points for special team success, right? But it does keep him on the roster. It does give him opportunity, right? If you're thinking about guys that you're drafting in the fourth round, some of these guys may be borderline roster guys, practice squad guys for the NFL team. If you're looking at Tank and another guy here who may be good, but may not be as much of a special teams contributor, you want to lean towards the special teams guy because they're going to make the 53-man for special teams. And guess what? When injuries hit wide receiver five on the depth chart, 
all right, Tank will be there on the roster when when wide receiver four on the depth chart goes down. As we know, because it's a long NFL season and injuries pile up, all of a sudden now he's getting snaps. He's he's running routes on the field. Wide receiver three goes down. All of a sudden he's getting five, six targets a game, right? We want to hone in on special teams, guys. That's a mantra here in the rookie big board. It makes these guys more valuable to hang around your roster. Wide receiver 25 here is Trey Tucker. 5'9", 172 out of Cincinnati. Trey Tucker also got that senior bowl invite. So he'll be somebody we'll get to see a little bit more of. Former three-star guy playing for the Bearcats. Wide receiver 25 overall for me at this point. 405 to 408, mid-fourth round super flex. Rookie ADP projection. Late day three. NFL draft projection here. Now, Trey Tucker, slot weapon. Another guy here who I think is going to live in the slot. He does get off the line of scrimmage really quickly with his speed. He's got quick, twitchy feet. He works the short field well. Good hands, works well over the middle of the field. He can make defenders miss in space, and he has a good body positioning at times. But he's going to be a guy who's mostly going to catch it if you throw it at him, all right? He's not going to necessarily haul in those off-target passes. He's not necessarily going to blow you away with a ton of volume, I don't think, at the next level. But I do think he can contribute to an NFL offense. 111 receptions, 1,426 receiving yards. Eight receiving touchdowns, 12.8 yards per reception in a 40 games for the Bearcats. Michael Wilson, I mentioned him earlier. Michael Wilson will be the last player that we do an in-depth profile on before I mention 10 guys uh, that you should watch as well. Michael Wilson out of Stanford, 6'2", 209, four-star prospect here. Wide receiver, 26 mid, fourth round, super flex ADP projection. And uh, day three late is my uh, projection for him. Michael Wilson is a quick moving big man. He covers a lot of space before and after the catch, has consistent hands, reliable target who reacts well to balls thrown off target. Uh, he shows the ability to beat defensive backs in space after the catch. He moves well east to west, so a really nice, well-rounded guy. Again, questions on his route tree, but I think that may just be a result of playing at Stanford. 134 receptions, 1,662 receiving yards, 11 touchdowns, 12.4 yards per reception, 36 games. The senior bowl is interested, and so am I on Michael Wilson here. Wideouts to watch. Now, on the rookie big board, we go deep here, all right? And so there's guys that I wanted to mention that aren't that I haven't discussed, I haven't gotten film on yet, but I wanted to make sure we're still on your radar. Jake Bobo is definitely somebody out of UCLA that I was a big fan of watching live. I think he could be an NFL guy. A.T. Perry is somebody I know the NFL is somewhat interested in. A.T. Perry did actually have a film review, and I still didn't want to cover him. All right, because I have him projected as a taxi squad stash, a lower-end guy. Ronnie Bell, same situation. Watch the Ronnie Bell tape. Came away, not that impressed. Uh, I do like Bell a little bit more than Perry, though. Jalen Cropper, super productive at a Fresno State. Julian Fleming, a high-profile recruit, has been consistently hanging around at Ohio State. That's going to make sure he's on the draft radar. Zakari Franklin, somebody I really like at a UTSA. I think he'll be in the conversation around 2022 for wide receivers. I just haven't gotten his tape yet because he just recently declared for the NFL draft. Josh Van out of South Carolina, somebody who popped during live watch. Uh, Andrea Iovasit, Isovius, I'm Still working on that one out of Princeton. Got a senior bowl invite, so we'll get to see more of him. Cornelius Johnson out of Michigan has flashed at times. Not positive he's declaring yet, and we're not going to hear from him probably until after the CFP is done. And Mitchell Tinsley out of Penn State, I believe, has declared. On top of that as well, Jadakis Bonds out of Hampton and Dallas Daniels out of Jackson State are uh, more players. I literally listed 10 on this slide. And as I'm looking at the rookie big board, I'm like, there's actually more guys that I want to talk about here. Uh, also to watch here, Johnny Wilson out of Florida state is six, seven, two thirty five. Uh, and if Dominique Blaylock does declare, he actually may be out of eligibility. Six, two, two Oh five out of Georgia. Blaylock seems like he's been a guy that's been uh, around forever. And I hope, and I know that a lot of patrons have actually been around forever. The rookie big board is coming up on another Huge draft season, folks. We are growing bigger than ever. The Discord is just blowing up. The YouTube uh, subs are blowing up. So please head on over to patreon.com slash rookie big board right now. 15% off an annual membership. And folks, access is just $3. There is no uh, more valuable uh, NFL draft fantasy football resource than the rookie big board. Just $3 a month. And you can get 15% off with an annual membership. Head on over, patreon.com slash rookie big board. And as always, I appreciate you checking out this episode of the rookie big board.